This is just a quick little look through this um, kit here from Revel, the um, Focke-Wulf FW200C5C8 C8, uh, Condor, which is a big four-engine bomber that the um, Germans used during World War II. Uh, this is going to be my next build. Um, so this isn't going to be like a proper inbox review. I just wanted to have a quick look through um, and uh, put this up as a sort of teaser because it sometimes takes a while once I'm into the build um, to get a video up. I've also got these two um, as extras. I've had a look at the Ed Edward do quite a large um, set for this, um, uh, as well as all the other parts to it as well. But I've, I've had a look through, and I'm, I'm not sure it really needs it. Um, anything more than what I've got here. So I've just gone for the zoom set, which um, gives you quite a large instrument panel, um, and all the harnesses, which are quite useful. So that's that, and um, the mask set, I would say, is a must. I mean, this is relatively inexpensive, the Montex ones. Um, sort of two or three quid from um, Hanant's, maybe four pounds for something this this big. So for it's, the amount of glass this is, that this has on it, uh, that's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned so uh, that's pretty straightforward just vinyl masks so they're already pre-cut just stick them on um, there's two boxings of the Condor from uh, well there's a few boxings of the Condor from Revel actually but um, there's uh, two boxings that are the new tool um, this is a kit that they've done over the years since the 70s um, and then they re-released it uh, sorry they retooled it and um, release new versions in I think it was around 2007 something like that um, this is the second boxing of that the other one is the more um, uh, recognizable uh, one from the Atlantic which is quite a famous um, from a famous group with the all-around the world symbol up, up here um, I think that's the C3 version um, but uh, I haven't you know I may be wrong there um, there's also a few others in 172nd um, from Trumpeter, uh, the same versions. Uh, they also do 148th one as well, which would be a bit of a big thing. Um, but looking at reviews online, um, the Revel one has the edge in detail. So this kit is uh, typical Revel right the way through, as you can see. It's uh, nothing new here, it's all in bags. Um, I have taken the fuselage uh, halves off the sprue, uh, just for ease, because they've taken up rather large sprue. Uh, so we'll get all these bits out of the way. I'll show you the fuselage halves first, um, just to give you an idea of the size of this. Um, so it's going to be quite big, as you can see. Um, I think the wingspan will be out to about here, something like that. It sweeps back a little bit. It's a very attractive aircraft. Um, it was a, uh, a civilian aircraft before um, the war and then the Luftwaffe pressed them into service. I'm pretty sure they were built for um, these, this uh, range and this um, uh, type was actually built um, for military operations. I don't think they were converted civilian liners. Um, but there are a few things as we go through the kit that you'll see which do sort of um, show it as being a civilian aircraft. Um, so that's the two halves there. Uh, if we look at the instructions, typical Revel again here, um, old school Revel. So they've only recently updated since I think about 2015 with coloured instructions. Um, you've got the decal sheet there which is very nice with um, large lettering for the uh, identification on the wings. Uh, you've also got um, instrument panels included here and quite a lot of stencil detail so that's nice. Uh, there's the date Revel 2006. Uh, these are cartograph printed decals so they shouldn't cause any problem. Um, and then flicking through there's a bit of a parts breakdown there. There's a few um, bits that aren't used in this one and straight into the cockpit and then works through. You can see it's quite involved it being um, a large aircraft or a bomber. Um, there's quite a few uh, things going on throughout the inside of the fuselage and then you've got the gondola coming together as well which is quite a feature of this again it's offset on the underside um, and then straight into the wings we're up to st uh, step 23 here and um, the wings are coming on and the engine nacelles look as though uh, we'll get into that in a second but it look as though they're already um, connected to the wings which Presumably it's going to save a bit of a fit, fit issue. And then running on through there, the glasswork starts to come on. And then um, there is an option for all four engines to be opened. So you've got open cows included. Um, that's where a lot of the 
larger exterior um, etch set from uh, Edward was used. It was it gave you um, parts for all four engines and a few parts um, on the undercarriage, as well as you also got um, curtains for the inside of the windows. So I feel as though I can probably scratch build all that. I'm going to use the instructions from that etch set to give me an idea of the things they add. Um, and uh, pretty straightforward, as you can see when we get to the end. It's just final parts for the um, on the exterior being um, added. Then you've got the option for the door to be open or closed, and a few parts on the underside there. Um, this here, the radar at the front, would all, I, I'm probably going to need to do a little bit of work with that because I expect at 172nd in um, plastic, that's going to be a bit heavy. Uh, then we've got marking options. Now these are quite interesting. Um, most of these aren't the Atlantic based ones, so. Um, that's the other boxing. So these are a bit. Um, th these. This is where the aircraft has been used in some um, more unusual places. So uh, the first one is the box art with the uh, squiggly camouflage, disruptive pattern all over the standard uh, splinter pattern. And this is for um, an aircraft, uh, a C5 aircraft, with the radar at the front. And um, that's in Norway, 1944. So the colour options have a little bit of discrepancy throughout this. Um, looking online, it's probably more likely that the underside colour is ROM65, but here they call out ROM76, which is a later war colour. And on the top, the splinter pattern is um, ROM72 and 73, uh, which is standard. So just watch that. You can make up your own mind if you want to do 65 or 76 on the underneath. Um, then the next option here is the winter 1943 in Germany. So that's a C8 version. Um, again, same colour callouts here. Um, then over to another C8 version, which is in February 1944, um, which I think is in France. It says Bordeaux there. And um, then there's the one that I go for, I think, because I want to use the. Um, missiles, the rocket missiles that come with this kit and this is uh, quite a unusual scheme as well and it looks like it's uh, quite a very a very late uh, um, aircraft, I don't know what it was doing in Germany in May 1945 but that's when it's been um, that's the marking option for this one uh, it looks like it's had a bit of an engine refit as well because if there's a call out for um, ROM70 on this engine here um, whereas the rest are painted in a more standard colour. So a little bit more interest, a um, bit lacking in the lettering and um, identification numbering on the underside so um, it's just calling out to me this is quite an interesting aircraft and it does have the guided uh, missiles or rockets as well um, attached to it so that's the one I'll be going for. Obviously with Revel, uh, no swastikas included, and um, they would be a bit of a key feature on an aircraft this size, so um, if you want to add those, you'd be looking for aftermarket decals. Um, and then jumping into the sprues, we'll just have a quick run through. Like I said, um, so here's a few parts which make up some of the interior, um, and uh, there's separators throughout the cabin on the inside and here you can see there's quite a lot of um, detail as far as uh, fabric detail so curtains pulling across to blank off the um, different areas of the uh, interior which um, leads you to uh, see that it's obviously um, you know civilian based aircraft so it's not designed for military from um, from the off so there's a few parts there which space out the fuselage and help for joining things together uh, then we've got uh, the rear horizontal um, stabilizers with quite heavy fabric detail but I don't mind that that's um, it's not a problem some people might not um, be so happy at how strongly defined the fabric detail is here on the um, ailerons and we've also got quite quite a large patch of fabric detail on the main wings as well and um, that's quite heavily done so here these are made up with two inserts, you just pop them in there. Um, a few parts here, I think that's wheel bay or maybe the bomb bay. Um, and a few extras like that, that's an uh, insert for the roof there. Um, so injector pin marks are on the interior, so they've got to be somewhere I, I guess. So I mean they, these aren't going to bother me at all, I don't think you'd see them, but there are injector pin 
marks, this being Ravel, so you've got to bear that in mind. Um, a few parts here as well, making up, uh, again, mostly bits for the interior. Um, quite nice uh, detail there on the seats for the inside. There's uh, fabric detail and also um, lap harnesses on some of these, which is good. Um, it really adds to the effect, so if you're not going to use an etch set and you want to build it out of the box, that's a very always. I always like to see um, some sort of seat belt or harness included. Um, and there's quite a lot of instrument controls there as well, which I think um, some of this would be replaced in the etch set, but not a lot of it. There's only a few parts for the main uh, forward cockpit area. So that's those parts, and then we've had the um, fuselage house, like I've shown you before. Uh, this kit's been knocking about a while, so I've got a few loose bits, but I, I'm pretty sure everything's there. I'll soon find out if, I, if there isn't as we get into the build. Now, um, this there also is a, um, another option for this kit, like I mentioned. I don't think we get any of those parts included in this one. I think you'd need the two separate versions. I don't think you can build anything other than a C5 um, or C8 out of this boxing. But again, I may be wrong there. So we've got one piece there for the gondola, and you can see quite how many windows there are, so I'm quite thankful for the uh, mass set. Uh, all of these um, clear parts are really, really nice. Uh, no problem for this scale. They're extremely clear and um, shouldn't cause any problem. It's nice to see those. Revel usually uh, do clear parts pretty well, to be honest. Um, then we've got this other bag, which has got a bundle of sprues in it. Uh, this is where I've lost There's a bit that's just rolled over. I've had two of these come off, uh, which are nose cones. I have checked that they're all here, but um, just keep an eye out for that when you're opening bags if you're going to do this kit, because they seem to be um, breaking off quite easily. Uh, there's the other one. So hopefully we'll have another two attached to the sprues. Otherwise that might be a bit of a problem before we get started. Um, and then here is a few duplicated um, sprues, I believe. Got two for the wheels and two for the engines. Uh, so there's the two for the engines. Uh, this being four engined uh, aircraft, so we've got two on each sprue. So there you can see uh, this is a really great thing to have included from Revel is um, just how many parts uh, go into this engine and um, the fact that it can all be exposed. And it's quite a nice detailed engine there, so um, I'm certainly going to open one at least, I think, to uh, show that off. So that's very nice. You've got lots of parts there to uh, add detail to the engine. This is the cowling here, and you can see that the engine will be sat in there, and then the side doors will be open. So quite effective. So that's the engines, and then we've got uh, two duplicated sprues again for the undercarriage and wheels. Uh, very strange under. Uh, we've also got the um, guided missiles here as well as the um, antennas at the front for the uh, radio versions or radar versions. Uh, this is where the nose cone pieces are as well that have broken off. So I've got one and obviously the other two I mentioned. Um, so everything looks really good here. The tyres are um, in two halves uh, but very good tread detail and um, it's got a very sort of gangly undercarriage this one. This is what I was getting at. It, it actually sits like this so if you can see the way that's um, bends out like this, uh, that's how it is in the aircraft, so uh, a very strange design feature. Uh, it obviously worked, because they uh, got up and down quite easily and um, you don't seem to see many problems with undercarriage failure. Sorry, the camera cut out there. Um, so yeah, now we're just moving on to the wings after the two uh, duplicated sprues there for the uh, propellers and wheels. And this gives you an idea of the wingspan, so it's going to be quite a large bird when it's all together. Um, and it's really nice to see the nasals uh, already attached to the wing, so it saves all of this problem, which um, is often a bit of an issue when it comes to putting these two parts together. So all you're really going to have is a seam line um, running between the edges of it, which is a lot easier to clear up than having to blend all this in here as well. So that's really useful. Uh, you may be able to see here the um, fabric parts to the wing, which is a little bit overdone, but um, I don't worry about that. It uh, means it will show up under a wash and you can sort of dry brush it. Uh, very nice um, surface detail all across here. We've got fine recessed panel lines. Um, 
and a bit of raised detail as well. So it's all really quite good, and um, that's that's the end of it. So you've got those um, that's the two parts of the wings there. So it's a very nice kit, eager to um, get into it. I've had it knocking about for over a year now, so um, quite happy to get this one uh, on the go. Um, I'll show you when I start the build. I'll show you the um, book that I used to look at when I was um, a lot younger. That's um, made me want to build this. I didn't realise until coming back to the hobby if there was actually one of these um, in a kit form because it was quite an obscure aircraft to me. But it, uh, it is nice that Revels picked that up and also Trumpeter as well in one seventy second. So hopefully I can do it justice and um, follow along with the build.